This lecture is just theoretical and I want to give a overview or introduction before we actually go to gas absorption or distillation. And I wanted to let you know that actually we can also work with volumetric mass transfer coefficients. So far, mass transfer coefficients discussed are mainly on unit surface of contact between the phases, meaning that we are talking about square meters, which is an area, area, and they're expressed as, remember, as flux per unit drive force. So we have moles per unit time and area, this is the flux, divided by the driving force. But in most of the widely used industrial cases, we use a lot of packings or plate columns, and the interfacial area is not only hard to calculate, but also not convenient at all. We will, in order to overcome this case or this difficulty, we typically use volumetric mass transfer coefficient, which is great because we just need now to calculate or get the total volume they occupy. Both mass transfer coefficient and specific surface can also be given, and they will depend, of course, in a lot of cases or a lot of things on the type of packings, the configuration, geometry, the sizes, flow rates you're working with, materials, uh, temperatures, and so on. They can be combined into a single product to provide a mass transfer coefficient on volumetric basis. As I was telling you, you just calculate the volume and that will be everything for you. Thus, for transfer of a component within the gas phase, the mass flux and the rate equation may be written as follows. And actually, not only for the gas phase, I also wrote it for the liquid phase. But typically what you will say, and I know that we have two areas, but think of this coefficient as a unique value and not as a product that you can separate. Therefore, you will need to calculate your area, send it to the left, you will have your flux, which is of course the mass transfer rate. You will have the difference between the interface and the bulk phase and these coefficients. So this is the mass transfer coefficient in volumetric conditions. And if you were to do an analysis, we already know that the mass transfer coefficient is typically the flux, let it be mole of A per unit area per unit uh, time. When we add this A value, this nothing more adds a M2 value on the top, but a M3 value on the bottom. When you cancel the units, you will see that this is essentially volume per unit time. This is what I was telling you here. Uh, the so-called specific surface, which this is the surface part and this is the volume part. And the same is true, of course, for the liquid. Mass flux per unit volume of the equipment, volumetric mass transfer coefficient, volumetric mass transfer coefficient for gas phase and liquid phase. And that's what I wanted to show you guys. We are not going to work right now with these so-called volumetric mass transfer coefficient. But from now on, when you see this part right here, please note that it's nothing more than a mass transfer coefficient for volume applications. Mm -hmm.